now that everything is running, we can start this. So we're doing a 100% A ending guide. Normally I run this game on <clears throat> a Japanese PS2. However, uh, it will be a lot easier for me to do a live guide on the PSP version. Uh, there's no disc swapping, which is nice. And on top of that, I can skip uh, cutscenes by fast forwarding because otherwise it's gotta be seven hours. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna head up here and change this to page. You can change your controls if you want, but change it to page. Uh, it'll make the text go a lot quicker, which is nice. Obviously something that you want. Uh, I adjust the sound settings as well, but that's up to you. Uh, we'll go to new game and we'll do it on normal. I will mute the game audio as I run through this probably. Uh, that's fine, it's pretty not very loud. So the beginning is pretty self-explanatory, just go through the cutscene, nothing too major. Uh, I guess I'll talk about what 100% is in terms of uh, the category. So you're looking to get 100% of all the artifacts uh, that drop from bosses, which include you having to loot them. Sorry, I will mute this because it actually is super distracting. Um, so you have to collect all of the artifacts that drop from the bosses. So that does mean you have to go to the forest of spirits twice. Actually, here, I'll talk about something real quick while we're here. So with these kind of dialogues, just uh, they have a simple diamond underneath. You can hold R1 and X, and I'll just skip the dialogues as they pop up. I guess just R and X on PS1. Uh, so it will just skip all the dialogue, which is nice. However, you have other text boxes that look like this which if I hold R1 and X here, you can see that nothing's happening even though I'm holding the button. For these ones, you can speed it up by holding down X. Um, it makes you go a little bit faster. It usually saves a bit of time. Over the course of the whole run, it'll, it'll save a lot more time. So you hold X and then you just um, tap X when you want to move the dialog tree. So it helps to run this a few times just so that you know when to hit X like this, where I usually double tap it uh, if I'm generally sure where the dialogue is going to end. So you can see the difference. This is what it looks like normally, right? And then when I was tapping it, was much quicker. Uh, as a side note, for that black screen there that pops up, uh, you can hold X as well, and it'll make it go quicker. Now, these ones, it's pretty standard, just R1 and X, run up to the Harpy. There is a strat to guard break the Harpy, and it changes things a little bit. I don't do it, just hit X, then hit square. It's pretty simple. Uh, so I'll fast forward to this, just a regular fight. Typically if the Harpy blocks more than three times, you tend to not uh, bother with the run, but it really depends how lazy you are and how much you wanna do it. Anyways, so we're trying to get A ending, and we're trying to get um, all of the artifacts. One note in this stream, as I didn't do it obviously because it went by really quickly, and I'm doing this all in one shot. Uh, you, If you hold forward, during the black screen fade in for this cutscene, you'll end up somewhere here. Uh, your character just walks forward during the black screen and then you can just walk out of the room. I'll show it to you next time it happens. It's gonna happen one more time. Uh, but I'll fast forward through this. Just so you hold that log. Pretty, pretty simple, really boring to watch. It's in the Japanese version, this takes about 35 minutes. Uh, and then in the English version, it takes like 40-ish. This is sort of the reason I don't like running the game, it's just these cutscenes are very long. Uh, you'll see it here. So I'm holding right, and I'm also holding R1 and X, and that'll allow me to skip all the dialogue. And then my character will also move during the black screen transition. Uh, hopefully it happens, so I don't look like an idiot. I don't know if they patched it out in the PSP version or not, but uh, on the PSX version, it definitely works. Yeah, you can hear him moving, and then you end up here. So what, what's actually going to happen in the PSX version, it's a little bit different. You end up inside of the doorway, and you have to walk out to walk like through the doorway. You'll end up, you'll clip through the wall, essentially, and then you can walk backwards to walk out. In the PSP version, it seems like I just, I'm there. Uh, you just walk in, sorry, you walk out and you walk back in. That one's pretty simple, and she should be here. She is. 
fast forward through the rest of this. A lot more dialogue, no big deal. I'll talk about all the strats and everything as we get to it. There's no point in explaining it now. Uh, there's a lot of things that happen. I do have a guide written up. It's very... How do I put it? It's very simple. It just tells you where to go, what you're looking for, and it tells you how to beat the dungeons that have puzzles. Uh, I don't do any like full write-ups because I know where to go. Uh, this is pretty easy. You just attack with Freya. So you always attack with Freya first, and then you stack with everyone else right afterwards. Because Freya's animation, she'll stay lingering up in the top of the screen longer if people are attacking, or if anyone is in their attack animation. But anyways, pretty simple fight. Uh, typically the fight will go with Freya once, sorry, Freya twice, Lenef and Argrim twice, and then the last rotation will be Freya and Argrim, er, uh, Lenef and Argrim. Because Freya's animation is the longest, you usually don't need her to attack a third time, which is nice. Uh, more story, one more fight here. I believe the mobile version has a skip button for this, so it makes it a lot quicker, which is nice. So first thing we do here, we're out, we can find the next dungeon. Uh, when I first start here, uh, I'll hit select or back, I don't remember, uh, and I'll pull up the whole map. As a side note for map movement, if you do overshoot something, you hit circle to fly. If you overshoot something, you can hold square and back and just place yourself around wherever you need to go. I'm not sure how many people actually use that or know that, but it helps. It's better than churning all the way around, that takes too long. Anyways, more text, more dialogue. So the first thing you do here, we're going to run up to the save point, we're going to open up our menu. We're going to go to our equipment, and we're going to take off the ring that Lenith is wearing. We'll come here. As a quick side note, I should have mentioned this before. There is a better strat out there right now, where Mokar ran, and he uses a lot of crystals, and it is considerably faster, about 10 minutes or so. Uh, personally, I don't think the route is very fun, and I think it's a lot of work, and I find this route a lot more enjoyable. So if you want to look up Mocha's run, you can. He did make a tutorial of it on his channel, uh, but I personally am not a fan of it, so I choose not to run it. Uh, technically, this is also not optimal. We're supposed to make Holy Crystals. I think they're faster, but I use Shadow, so just make four maces. Uh, we're going to transmute our Spectacles and our Elixirs because we don't need them. And then we're going to use that material material points to transmute four of the crystals into shadow jumps. Or four of the rods into shadow jumps. So now we have four of those. We'll be using that for the boss. I'm going to skip all the dialogue. One thing you can do if you're feeling feisty is uh, sliding. It sometimes is faster. It depends what kind of slide you get. That slide was probably about the same speed as just run jumping over him. Uh, but... Oops. Um, but otherwise, usually it's faster, so it all depends. Occasionally you'll get a walk like that. It's just, you have to play around with your timing on when you're holding directions. So here, just hold right. Typically, if you hold right during text boxes, um, you can get a good walk, or sorry, you got a good run, rather, instead of getting a walk. Uh, door opens up, you head down here, you can just slide. You'll end up in front of the staircase there. Freya will talk to you a little bit. You can slide off, and then turn around and slide. Head crystal on the wall, you're going to use it to jump. Uh, just do it as you're falling, so it's a little bit quicker. Technically, you can do it while you're running too, but it, it slows down your... You have to stop to shoot it. Whereas when you're falling, your momentum retains. I'm a big proponent of sliding down these little gaps. Some people don't, some people just fall. I think you gain a little bit of extra distance, but I could be wrong. We're gonna get that box in the right there. It's gonna give us a book that we're gonna use to make, uh, I think it's called Glacial Edge later. I haven't like, looked at the names of anything for a little bit. Uh, there's a guy here, just slide. You'll slide right into the text box if you do it on the very tip. You hit this thing twice, pretty easy. This just introduces bonus experience as well as uh, it clears a little path at the top, which is normally blocked. 
And we just need to open that up. I'm going to go really slow here. I'm not going to speed burn it just because I do want to talk about what I'm doing. Two locks is pretty bad. Also, I'm using a new controller here, so excuse the bad platforming. Uh, I'll try to do a quick strat here. I'll show you what it looks like. It really depends on how the enemies spawn here. We got a low spawn. That's super good. And yeah, we missed the jump. Anyway, you can just climb up that ladder without him being there. If you miss one of the... Because I missed one of the... Um... Sorry, I missed the first jump when I climbed onto the ladder. So it sort of messed everything up. But normally you could just go straight up. Uh, if you freeze the enemy on the ground, if he's up on the higher platform, because he moves around a little bit, uh, it tends to be a little bit harder to get up there. You can still do it. You just need to adjust your crystal timing. And it's a little bit more tricky. Uh, alternatively, you could just wait in the corner until the enemy falls down. So with this fight, you're just going to use the shadow crystals to kill everything. Uh, you do go first, so just be careful when you're mashing through that dialogue. Uh, we're going to use these. Each of the dragons is one, and the vampire is two, hence why you need four. There is a little trick where if the enemy doesn't die, you can open up your inventory mid-animation. Well, towards the end of the animation, you'll see it with the vampire. It's just the dragons die, so you don't get the opportunity to do it there. But I'll try to show it here. I should be able to get it. Yeah, like that. So like while he's being hit, you can open it up. Now usually you have to wait for him to get back up and then the animation to go through, but... So here, since this is what the category is, we need to loot both of these items. We are keeping both of them. Technically, if you keep... So we need to keep the sword. Uh, alternatively, or sorry, and then this one we keep. You don't have to, but we want to lower our evaluation, so we, we have to do this at some point anyways. Plus the animation is faster for keeping an item. I was trying to skip this next dialog box that came up, but I guess the PSP version has a gap. <laughs> it has a gap between uh, the dialog box popping up and you being able to cancel it. I've never had that happen, but I usually run PSX, so... But anyways... Uh, so yeah, you pick up the items, you keep the sword. The sword is going to be used for the next boss. Yeah, that was really bad. You can just get up there with one go if you space your crystal properly. Uh, if for some reason you give up the sword by mistake, you can go to Arngrub's house and get a Dragon Slayer. That wastes a lot of time, so if you're not lazy, you can reset, which would probably be the correct way. But uh, I... <laughs> you can get a Dragon Slayer if you're like me and you don't feel like resetting every time you make a single mistake. This category is fun to run. It's just these cutscenes in the beginning really hurt. Anyway, get out of here like normal. Two crystals. Exit. So, what are we looking here for Chapter 1? We're looking for Lilin and we're looking for Soleil Catacombs. Uh, so, we're going to search. Let's see what we get here. So this is Leyland, which is good, because we need him. And now we have to search for Soul Day Catacombs. We have to do this, which we got. So that's the best pattern you can get. It's just one after the other. Uh, it's not very common. So we're going to go pick up Leyland here. Uh, the reason we pick him up is because he's an archer with an unblockable uh, magic attack, <laughs> which is really good, obviously, for setting up certain strats. Uh, also makes the run a lot less RNG heavy, which is nice. Well, again, unlike Mocha's run, which has a bit of RNG in it, and sometimes resetting after an hour isn't fun. So this is the place we're going to go to later. Uh, this is Soul Lake Catacombs. We do need to pick it up now. You cannot pick it up later. Uh, but we will be visiting it in Chapter 5. Uh, after that, you can just... Well, before you end your chapter, I usually do this all at once. Put Leyland on your party. Uh, you want to make him a crossbow, which is this thing here. It's literally called crossbow. Equip that. I always double check, but uh, see so that this aiming wisp attack. This is unblockable and um, is good for setting up everything. We're also going to equip the sword that we got to Lenneth, and then we can just end the chapter. We need that sword for the Nevov Swamp boss. Doo -doo -doo. Okay. 
So what do we do here? We need Academy and we need to find Swamp. And then we're gonna run Swamp. So this is a character, this or this is always the first one that you get. It's uh, main story kind of things. It's not too relevant. I don't even remember who you get off of it, to be honest. Something about Argrim's past. This is probably the worst pattern you can get. Uh, so that's so. This is Academy here in the right corner, and then we're gonna look for Swamp, which is sort of in the bottom right. And that's Swamp. So that's what we're looking for. We can now head to the Swamp. Uh, pretty easy dungeon to run for the most part. Occasionally there's a bit of luck with the ghosts, but usually pretty smooth sailing. So you're just going to start off running to the side. Um, there's going to be three ghosts here. You can usually skip two of them. That was pretty good. Not bad. And uh, there's one more mob here. So we're going to head here. I believe it's a right. Or it's a left rather. Yeah, you jump over the birds. And in here we're going to take a right. And then we'll take another left. Jump over this, get this. We need the second chest here. This is gonna give us a Demon Slayer. You can usually get over this guy before he unfreezes. On the PSP version, it's a little bit slower. Uh, you can pick up the Cure Condition that's in that chest. We'll need it for, I believe, Auto Item later. Take a right here, uh, freeze this guy, jump over. Slide if you land on him. Miss your slide like me if you don't. Skip the dialogue box here, chop down the tree. Pretty simple. And now we just head to the boss. We already have our sword equipped. That was really close. Luckily I squeezed through there. Okay, so I haven't really tested this, but it seems that when you, there's a wall, you can slide off on the left side. I'll try to get it. And it pushes you a little bit further so that your walk to the boss is shorter. I missed it. Anyway, so we're gonna take a long walk. Normally what happens is <clears throat> it pushes you to the edge right there, so you have to walk a few less steps. The, the strat is to run all the way to the left, you slide off, then you turn around in midair and you slide off one of the walls because it has a little bit of a gap. Uh, because Leyland's attack is unblockable, we're gonna use his. One shot the dragon. Uh, the dragon is weak to lightning, so uh, he dies instantly to that sword. Get a few levels that sort of matter, but not really. So here's another artifact that we need. This is the Bark of the Dryad, I believe. We're gonna keep that. That one's very important. Uh, if you give it up, just reset. Not worth the time. We're gonna change it into a dimension slip later, which will allow us to walk by enemies. Sorry if I take a little bit of extra time <laughs> giving up items. The timing is different than it is in PSX, so I am trying not to click too quickly. That's the chapter. Pretty easy. Move on to chapter three. Wait, right, Freya talks to you for a bit. No problem. Uh, so what are we doing here? We need to get Cashel. We need to find Mansion. And then we're doing Brahms Castle, a Clockwork Mansion, and Odd Rock Caves. So it's a nice chapter. We do some things in it. Uh, you'll always get Cashel first here, which is fine, since we need Cashel anyways. We don't need whoever the second person is. And that's Clockwork Mansion, so we're all set. It's just there at the bottom left-ish, sort of in the middle left. Anyways, we head to Brahms Castle first. Uh, here we're gonna pick up a, deep, a Beast Slayer, which is gonna be good for Clockwork Mansion. Here, we're just here for items, essentially. And, uh, well, progressing the A ending, I suppose. We can head up here, you go up here, you go up here once and then a second time as well. And then you run to the left. You're going to pick up the... It's the first chest here, I believe. They're faced the wrong way. You don't have to technically pick them up. But uh, shimmying in there is kind of hard, at least for me. Uh, we picked up a unicorn horn there in case you didn't see it. We'll need that later to make a, a unicorn horn. Yeah, you walk past the first set. You go down on the first of the second. Uh, exploding chest for a beast slayer. And then head up here. Should be another enemy? No, I believe not actually. You head down here four times, I believe. One more time. Yes. And we're gonna head straight left. Try not to let that mob hit you. 
Uh, Mr. Slides, very important. Pat up on the first. And then we're going to make a quick circle. We have all our items. Now we just head towards Braum. Uh, you can do a cheeky little ice there, a crystal. Not too difficult. Uh, there's a cutscene if you're on PSP. Otherwise, there isn't. Do -do -do, dialogue. We're going to choose the second option here to hesitate uh, because we actually don't want to be there. Freya's going to come here and yell at you for not doing your job. Which is fine, no big deal. It's supposed to happen. Uh, we had to Clockwork Mansion, that though we have the Beast Slayer. Okay, so this dungeon is, or at least can be, really annoying. Make sure you mind all the enemy spots. If you know where they are, it makes this place a lot easier. Uh, never walk on stairs like I just did. Oh, you always want to jump over them. Okay, so let me see here. The solution to this is up, up, right, down. I, oh, we'll go through it. So first one is up. As I mess it up. Uh, I think it doesn't matter, but I'll reset anyways, just in case. So we're going to go up, up again. And we'll head to the right. I'll post the link for all these. I have them uploaded um, so you can follow along pretty easily. You don't want to fall all the way down here. You actually just want to catch the ladder. So you want to go down, up, and then you go down a few times. And then up. I'm going to take this right here. You know what? I've never tested if you can grab the ladder as you're falling when you're coming into the room. Uh, the room can be kind of annoying though. So we're going to go down, up, down, and we just way down. Pretty simple. Not too bad. Uh, careful with this guy on the stairs here. Sometimes crystals don't reach him. There should be another mob there, but <laughs> at least I think there is. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're killing the boss. <laughs> we're gonna buy an angel curio. Uh, usually here I buy three power bangles since you'll need them over, to, or four rather, since you'll need them over the course of a run anyways. We'll buy two magic bangles while we're here and a freeze check. These are for later, but you might as well get them now. We're gonna give Arngrim the Beast Slayer. We're gonna put on a Power Bangle and a freeze check. We're gonna have Leyland have an Angel Curio and a Power Bangle. And then you might as well equip Lyneth with a Power Bangle as well. And that should be it. I'm gonna head inside. So essentially the boss does a tri elemental attack. Uh, it will kill everyone but Arngrim, and it can freeze. Technically, if you want to take a real fast, you can just not buy the freeze check. But if you get frozen, then you have to reset. Uh, Arngrim can one-shot the boss, but you want Leil in there for protection in case he doesn't block. So Arngrim got zero status effects, which is good. But you can get uh, poisoned. I don't even know what they are. I think fire does nothing, and then it's poison and freeze. Uh, again, just keep off the items here. No reason to give them up yet. We don't start doing that until chapter 4. Which is kind of soon, to be fair. Again, same thing, when you're going down the stairs, just jump. You uh, lose movement speed when you're walking down them, as you can see. A little bit slower. I mean, not... Sorry, it, it doesn't matter too much, but you do lose a bit of speed. Uh, anytime you fall long distances, make sure to slide when you hit the floor. Just because it... Uh, sometimes you'll get the wall cling. Like, uh, you cling onto the floor, and you don't want that. Uh, I believe it's this one up here that we're heading to, right beside Ruins. It is. I think it's Camel Village. So here we pick Cashel. Uh, less for having Cashel and more for uh, needing the dungeon that he unlocks, which is Otterock Caves. So I head back in there. And I'll do a quick dungeon. This one can be annoying and I'll probably mess it up. So excuse that, but you, you'll you see when I run it. 
I'm also not very good at platforming, so <laughs> that tends not to help. So we're gonna head inside. First thing you do is drop down, freeze this guy. Uh, one thing you'll note is that if you, uh, sorry, if when you're pushing that guy down the stairs, you want to let go of him and then, see, how do I say this? You grab him, you push him, you let go of him and then you re-grab him. Uh, the reason you do that is because when you start, as soon as you start walking down the stairs, you, uh, let, you let go of him automatically. So you might as well just do it before the game does it for you. Okay, so we want to sit around here. That's probably a little bit far, to be honest. Oh, no, we got it. Okay, so you drew it around there. The second one, there's a little marker on the ground here. <clears throat> Sorry. You can see there's a little black spot. It's much more noticeable in the PSX version. Uh, you can actually do a cool strat there where you... I'll show you when we're going out, actually. Hopefully I don't get frozen. So you can bypass this dragon. Uh, it's pretty easy. You just make a crystal in front of him and jump over. If you want to go down uh, a level like I just did, it's down in the circle. Pretty easy. We're going to go here. Uh, people are still dead, but that's fine. Give him the Demon Slayer. If he has a bangle, he should be fine. Anyway, we have a boss fight. It's pretty easy. Well, in into unblockable death. Pretty good. Pretty self-explanatory so far. It gets a little bit tougher as you go along. I found this game isn't necessarily difficult to finish as much as it is. It's, it's difficult to do while going fast, which I think a lot of speedrun games are like that. Uh, but like if you played Valkyrie Profile 2, for example, that game is just, <clears throat> I, I don't even care about going fast. I can barely finish it. It's so difficult to speedrun. Uh, there's a cool trick that Mocha found here. So if you jump like this, you'll enter the doorway anyways. Anyway, the thing I wanted to show is, if you're up here, let me reset the frost timer. If you're up here, you can get down really quickly by doing this, which is nice. So, if you want to go a little bit faster. Uh, I am definitely going to hit every single soldier on the way out, just as a side note. Uh, so the one that spawns here, this one's pretty easy to avoid, as I almost hit him. And the second one, not so much. I usually take a quick stop, because he spawns right here. Uh, it's harder to do when you're running because of the low time variance and everything else, just if you can react. But other than that, this dungeon is pretty easy. Uh, for the little patterns, for the um, eye laser freeze things, they're not too difficult to get down. Just practice it once or twice and you'll remember it forever, to be honest. Uh, that's the chapter, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna double check. Yep, so we're gonna go on to chapter four. Chapter four and five are very long and very boring, very exhausting. However, with the power of emulators, we can fast forward through everything. So here we're looking for uh, Dark Tower. Let me just take a look here. We're looking for Dark Tower, we're looking for Cave of Thacus, and we're looking for Lazard. So that was tower, I believe. That's cave. And this should be lizard. No, that is not lizard. That was tower. As a side note, if you do watch Mocha's Guide, it is in Japanese, so be wary. So we're going to go here and we can watch Lazard's cutscene. This one with Mustina is very long and they take a large majority of the run, uh, along with the opening cutscene, which is unfortunate. But with the power of four times speed, it goes very quickly. I was debating running this in English, but it makes it a lot easier for me to tell you what the item is in English and then you see it in Japanese because that way if you're running in Japanese, you know what to look for. And if you're running in English, you can just see it. Because I know trying to learn from Japanese runs is very difficult when you have a Japanese copy. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do here is notice that we didn't give a magic bangle to Jolanda because we're not gonna use her. So we put Laurenta on our team. Uh, we're gonna change her ability to. It says crosshair raid, it's a mystic cross, I believe, in English. Next, we're gonna. You can see our uh, evaluation rating down there is zero. So we want it to at least be one. Freya won't kill you if you have it at least one. If you have it at zero, they kill you. So just give up a robe. Uh, you just head here, you hit use. Click on the rope. Pretty easy. Um, we're gonna make curios for everyone. So that means first thing we do is we check a flail and lost his, which he didn't. So that means we only have to make three. Uh, actually, give me one second. I want to look up what the safe state options are here. Uh, F2 for safe state, F4 for load. Pretty simple. Okay. Just in case I make a mistake here. So we make uh the curios and that should be it we just come curious to everything take off line of sword and give her to beast later just for the extra hits those are important plus you need to kill a bunch of beasts on the way um i believe in one of the versions of this game you can um use r1 and l1 or like some analog stick combinations to cycle through your characters uh, you can't do that on the psx version i give her a curio just in case lazard wants to target her i'll give her a bangle even though she doesn't really need it. Uh, I usually put on the... Sorry, I put on the... It's like an... I forget what it's called. It's an hourglass or whatever that item. The mirror that reflects projectiles or magic attacks. You can put that on if you want. It has a chance of breaking, uh, which is unfortunate. We got a bad pattern here. I might get hit. Yeah. He moves really quickly. Uh, occasionally he stops. You can jump later. Um, but... So it's fine if Lanif dies, we'll just remake our Curio. Hopefully we get a good run cycle at least. Which we don't. I'll do a safe state here, just in case. Uh, and then we can just redo our, redo our runs, in case we don't get it. So that's fine. Uh, we just exit here on the first floor and we come back in. If for some reason, the enemy would still be back here, but since he's not, Makes her life easier. We can remake another Curio, so that's no big deal. Land us back alive. Alright, we're gonna head down. This is gonna be a beast here, or a dragon. Uh, same thing, just uh, he has our blow her box, just jump over him. Uh, run here, freeze this guy. There's gonna be another one here, but he is closer, so just be careful. Also, try not to cancel your slide into a. your slide into a stand really quickly because you'll miss the speed. So this is a good pattern, pretty easy, he stops. It just really depends on how late you jump. I'm gonna head to the right here and head down. We can fight, we have Leyland, we have everyone alive I believe, so should be fine. Just use Leyland to unblockable, land for the Beast Slayer. Pretty easy. Now, this is just good experience for everyone. The only reason you want experience is just for the skill points for later. The actual uh, stats and everything aren't too relevant. Uh, I tried out some things with golden eggs at some point where... Actually, here, I'll talk about this real quick. So, don't do that. Actually, I'm just going to reload. We'll go from here. I'm very smart. Because I actually want to show this strat off. I haven't seen anyone else do it. And I made it up on my own, so that was really cool. So I want to show it. <laughs> okay, so we'll save here. Uh, so what you do here is you freeze the first guy, you jump over, and then you just run straight down. It seems really simple, and like, yeah, duh. But nobody does it, <clears throat> and... It's difficult because those magicians teleport around and they freeze and they do all these kinds of weird things. So I just want to let you know that if you freeze the first one, you can just run straight down the stairs. I spent some time figuring it out. Uh, it didn't take very long, obviously, but... It's a simple solution that not a lot of people go to. Anyway, so after we head up here, we're going to power up this crystal. Uh, you can launch yourself down, makes it a little bit faster. And from here, you can actually just run the same strat, just backwards. 
Run straight up, freeze the guy if he's there. If he decides to leave, then okay. Uh, I don't recommend jumping there. It's kind of risky. Uh, those magicians move around a lot. The wizards, whatever you'd like to call them. Uh, same thing here, just crystal your way down. I'm going to freeze this guy, I'm going to freeze the second guy. Uh, here's some RNG, so I'll do a quick save state here. Essentially, we can kill one of the dragons, but then the other one takes too many turns. So we do a run. I believe you can actually just do this. <laughs> Which is really cool. There we go. Uh, if you don't get the first run, it's usually fine because you can make extra curios. Uh, just try not to make any mistakes in the elevator like I did, where you have to make one beforehand. So we're almost at the part where we can ignore all the enemies in the game, which is nice. Uh, just freeze the first guy and jump when you enter about 75% down the stairs, or rather 25% uh, down the stairs. Hey Hurst, thanks for the host. I appreciate that. Uh, so we're gonna head all the way back to where we started. This is the room where the chimera was, and we can just head through the portal. Uh, here we're gonna pick up an Aether Scepter. Well, this is why we turned on the two uh, power platforms, in case you were wondering. So from here we can make an Aether Scepter, and we can make a Dimension Slip. The Dimension Slip allows you to go through enemies, so you can avoid all encounters, and then uh, the Aether Scepter is just very strong, at least at this point in the game. Uh, open the first chest, just slide past it, so you can open the second. So here we're going to equip the... I believe it's called a Conversion Gem, is that right? Uh, conversion Gem. And we're going to transmute the Bark of the Dryad, and it's going to make the Dimension Slip. Then we're going to go down here, equip the Slip. While we're here, we're going to go to Lorenta, we'll give her an Aether Scepter. Uh, when you equip Lorenta's... Okay, I'm going to double check, because I don't know if this is actually different. Okay, it's the same. So when you equip uh, a new weapon to a character, their skills stay the same. Uh, in terms of attacks, rather. So, uh, you can change it to Mr. Cross when you first enter, and then when you change your weapon, it ends up being the same. Hey, Horst, hope you're enjoying the tutorial. It's going to be pretty quick because we're on PSP, so we don't have to sit through all the cutscenes, which is nice. Uh, because all the enemies are now on a different plane of existence, you can just uh, bounce around, do whatever you need to do. This is also why we don't do Soul Day right away. There are too many enemies. It takes too long. Uh, much easier if we just wait. Uh, we're gonna, we have to make another Curio because I believe Line of Flossers. But let me double check. Lana lost hers. Uh, Layla lost his. So we have to make two. Technically, we can get away without doing that, but that's very risky. So we head through the portal. This is through Lazard's room. Now I'm going to make a safe state just in case, but usually nothing goes wrong. Skip through everything. A bunch of dialogue. Uh, this fight is pretty easy. I just you have to time a few things, and then again the timing is different between PSX and PSP. So just in case I mess it up, I want to be sure. So you're gonna go first. <clears throat> you don't want to attack as I did. What you want to do is skip end your turn. Essentially, we're going to we'll end the fight. No, well that's why I make safe states. Anyway, you don't want to attack. Uh, Laurenta will end the fight by using her super with the Ether Scepter, which is why we equip it. However, you need to build up the combo meter, and her first turn she is not available. So you do want to end your first turn, so that way um, <clears throat> you can fight when she's available. This is also why we create our curios, so we can have everyone alive and build up the meter. Hopefully she's not dead. Good. Are we reflecting this? We are not. Is she dead? Good. Okay. So we use Leland to open up. I usually do Leyland into Lorenta and then hit Armdrums and I don't know. Uh, usually you want to do, yeah, in that order. So triangle, circle, square, X usually is what I do. And you want to put a little bit of a delay. 
because Lenef's um, thir second attack launches people, and the sometimes the stars will like sort up because the opponent's in the air, and by the time the opponent lands, the stars are already way over, and Lorenta misses her attack. So I put a little bit of a delay. I'll do like one hit of Lenef, one hit of Arngrim to beat the combo meter, and then I'll delay the second hits for when the stars are hitting. But anyways, that's pretty much the fight. Uh, if your Aether Scepter breaks, no big deal. Don't worry about it. We have a backup strat for that. Okay, so because we gave up our um, <clears throat> robe, we don't have to... Sorry, because we give up our robe, well, Freya doesn't kill us, which is nice. So we're gonna hit, because we still have our Aether Scepter, we're gonna do Cave of Thacus in this chapter. Normally, if your Aether Scepter breaks, I'll show you what to do, uh, but you would do it in the next chapter. So if your Aether Scepter broke, end the chapter here, go to chapter five. If it didn't break, just stick with us and watch Cave of Thacus. Either way, I suppose, uh, you'll have to watch how to do Cave of Thacus anyways. Uh, so that's not Cave of Thacus. Should be this one here. So when you do Cave of Thacus, you want to change uh, Laurenta's attack into Fire Lance. Actually, you know, I never tried something. Let me try here. I want to see if I can go by, go by uh, this enemy here because the, the, the water pit's very slow. Probably not. Okay, that's fine. I never actually tested much of it. Uh, here it's pretty easy, just jump over everything and head left. We're gonna go down and then head down again. With these pedals, you can just get on top of them before you chop them. It is slightly slower, but less mistakes that way. So this guy, you wanna talk to him until Lenf bends over and, or kneels over rather, and picks up um, the item. And then after that, you're good. I talked to him one too many times. This is also another easy dungeon, however, the boss fight is easy to mess up uh, because uh, the Fire Lance kills him so quick. So you want to chain Fire, last, Fire Lance last. There's also a little bit of a glitch. Uh, I haven't tried it on the PSP version, so I'm not really sure if this works. But essentially what you do is, as you, jump, as you run towards this orb, you're going to freeze it, which you're supposed to do anyways. But you want to do it when you're in the middle of the waterfall, so that way the text box gives you the invol. I'll show you what I mean. Like that. So that you gain invulnerability through the waterfall. Because normally the waterfall will just hit you. Oh, here you can just slide. You'll go as far as you need to go. Anyway, it's a bunch of text. Here's also a bunch of text. Teaching you how damage mechanics work and everything else. Uh, we're not going first anyway, so just mash. Okay, so you want to go Leyland first. Uh, Lorenta will kill anything she hits, but you want her to do her super, and sometimes you can't combo after an enemy is dead. So, to avoid that, we do it like that. And we have her go last. Just as long as she's in the combo at some point. If you do not use her, I don't believe she can super. So that is the sound of an Aether Scepter breaking, uh, which is fine. We don't really need it anymore. Actually, that's not true. We need it for one more fight, uh, but it's not a big deal. We can just get another one. I'll explain a few backup strats when we hit the next chapter. So keep one of the items, set up the other one. You, you have to do it in that order, otherwise, because you get minus plus one for sending it and minus five for keeping it. So if you keep it, if you send it first and then keep it, you'll end up with minus four. Then we can just exit the dungeon. Uh, you'll see what the waterfall normally does when you try to walk into it. It's just in a reverse. Yeah, I'll just hit you. So 
see, I can't go, I can't walk by it. So that's that's why the text uh, box glitch really helps. So we should be good here. So that's the end of chapter four, or for you might be midway through chapter five, but either way, we can end the chapter here. Fast forward through all of Freya's talking. So here we need to find uh, Mystina, Lucian, Arcdane, and Citadel. Don't do it all at once because Arcdane gets replaced with a story, and you don't want that story. Yeah, well, I mean, there's a strat where you do want that story, but this isn't it. <laughs> uh, so, but you'd have to be forced to watch the story to do the dungeon first, and you don't want that. So that's Mystina. We're gonna find Lucian over here too, since they come in a row. Which is this one here for Dribble Town. Uh, and then we'll head here. Actually, we're dead if we do that, which we did. Let me load. <laughs> you need to give up an item before you do that. How far back are we? Ah, okay. I'll do this real quick. We have to, when you enter the new chapter, you have to give up an item because your evaluation is zero. Uh, so if you go straight into Mystina, you do die. <laughs> so don't do that. I wonder if you can go backwards quicker. I don't know if that'll be quicker or not. Ah, maybe. You skip the water. Which is nice. I wonder if you don't end up with zero because we did cave. I haven't done cave on time in a long time. It's always been in the next chapter for me because my interceptor always breaks. I guess we'll check. So yeah, our evaluation zero. Let's give up an item. I usually give up lightning sword because it's not worth very much and we need to sell some items later. Make a quick save here. Go find Mistino. So the nice part is that when you get to this point in the run, you can skip the text here by holding buttons, R1 and X. And then once you hit the Lazard section, you can actually just go to the washroom or do whatever you want because uh, the text auto runs. So everything here and on, this is all auto running. You don't actually have to be here. So if you want to go to the washroom or do anything, that's a good time. Sorry, I'm just adjusting the game. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna go find Lucian. Uh, I think it's faster if we fly through the world map. Having a flat earth is great. Uh, we can just go straight into Lucian's. 
from what I recall. At least Lucien's is a lot shorter. Okay, so I'll, I'll make an actual save here if I can. I just set the emulator, so I'm not really sure. Uh, no. Good. Uh, what else? So now, uh, just keep your characters, keep all the equipment there, it's not a big deal. We're gonna put on Lucian, we're gonna put on Mystina. We're gonna give them a bunch of experience. Uh, I'm not really sure what the right amount is, to be honest. Just give them whatever you want. Not a big deal. And we're gonna make pull arm, one pull arm, I think. Uh, this one here, it's pull pull up, pull arm X, pull X. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna transmute it, and it's gonna give us a poison gem, which is this thing here. Um, that should be it. We just need them to get some experience. So let's go do soul day. We'll give them stats and everything after this. Actually, we'll, eh, we'll do it later. We'll do it later. Let's go do Soul Day now. So Soul Day Catacombs. We pick up the attack pal here. I'm missing this for some reason. You can just shoot yourself off this ledge if you're... How do I do it? Is it like this? Okay, I'm actually curious now. Maybe I just slid? Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. There's a lot of sliding around here. If Jesus, there's a lot of sliding around here. Uh, if you want to, and hopefully you don't get a walk like I did. So we're gonna head here. All these enemies we normally have to fight, but we don't. And just drag them around. For anyone wondering, Jesus, normally I look for, I, I use uh, just a regular PS2 controller, but I'm trying out a PS4 controller on my PC since it's easier to uh, run. I don't have to install anything or get any cables. So first time using it for this game, feels kind of awkward. Now we're gonna head up here afterwards. We're gonna pick up whatever this is. It's a, vo it's a void, I think. That's what the item is. Anyway, we don't really need it. Uh, we just need to transmute it. There's a top section there, don't worry about it. It doesn't do anything. We'll jump over now since we have to jump over it later afterwards. We push this dinosaur into the circle. As soon as you start hearing it shiver, you can just let it go and move. Uh, for anyone who doesn't, oops. For anyone who doesn't know how to uh, ladder climb like that. You just jump and then just hold up. Okay, so you're gonna head all the way here through the room. It's pretty simple. Just jump up here. There's a way you can go around, like up and around. I don't know. I never do it. Uh, dialogue. And then what you do here, whoops, it's not that. Let's try and open up my inventory. Uh, just use the poison gem, kills everything. And of course we have to pick up all three of these. Uh, just remember to send the last one up. We have to do one more thing here. We have to go pick up this chest here. Gives us magic power, I believe. Yeah, magic power. Uh, I don't remember what the other chest is, so I'll go check. 
I don't recall if I pick it up or not. What is this? I don't think we need that. So now we're gonna do some menuing. Uh, I want to change some of these items. So we're gonna take off the creation gem, the conversion gem. We're gonna change, okay, so we're gonna use magic pal. We're gonna transmute a void into guts. Uh, we'll use guts. Then we need to change cure condition into auto item. And then we already use attack pal. Uh, that's this thing, right? Attack pal. So then we use attack pal. Pretty simple. All right, head to skills. We're gonna give three auto item to each character and then the rest in guts. Uh, after that, you're gonna head to your last category. Use R1 to scroll down and do attack pal as much as you can. This is why the levels are important, but you, you have a bunch of experience left over in your uh, experience orb, so. Okay, so we're gonna turn on auto item. You're gonna hit square to select the auto item menu. And then you're gonna just give them union plume to the max. So this is all you really want. Uh, you also want to give them guts. So essentially what these do is auto item uses items for you depending on your settings uh, in between turns. So if someone dies in between the turn, they'll be revived. So you don't have to waste your turn doing it, which is nice. And guts, whenever you would die, it gives you a chance to revive at 1 HP, depending on the level of guts. So, pretty good. Um, we're gonna make, uh, I think this is Palish, and then two bows, fire crossbows. That's uh, this one here. Make two of these. I'm gonna give one to Lyneth. I always make this mistake, so I don't do this, but give Lyneth the bow first before you do all this, because now you have to go back and give her the skills again, because she changed weapons. Well, be, not because she changed weapons, she changed the weapon type, which would normally be in the B and C categories, but we don't use those, so. Uh, I changed weapon, her weapon skills by one, just to give her her launch first, or last, I don't remember. I changed the order. Uh, and that should be fine. We can go to Salerno Academy now. Should be really easy. Uh, make a safe state just in case, it's not. So we're gonna head down here. Uh, if you can jump while hitting the vines, it really helps your time. Head down on the first one, and what we're gonna do is pick up the scent from here, which I always forget, but today I remembered. So walk on all the way in, pick up the scent, uh, and then we're gonna head towards the acid. So you're gonna head down, you're gonna head down, and then you're gonna go all the way to the right. Uh, I messed that up. One too many downs. I think. Yes, one too many downs. It's gonna head in here. You're gonna talk to this class. Don't mess up like I do and try to skip dialogue in the PSP version because it messes up. Now we're gonna head down. We can break this. I use my acid here. There's a bunch of different ways you can do this. This is the way I do it. I pick up the scent here and then walk right out. Now we're gonna pick up the perfume. We go this way. We're gonna go back for the acid one more time. Whenever you see that eyeball there, that's how you know we were in the right section. We're gonna break this. And then we can go grab uh, the scent again, and then head around. And then that should be it. And a lot of people do this in different ways. Smoka's run was different. That's the way I do it. It seems to be the fastest. If you find something faster, feel free to do it. But 
this is the basics. Right, we're going to run here and pick up this scent off of the water. Essentially, just different scents react to different plants, and those plants break. The acid keeps the plant from reviving as soon as you exit the screen. Uh, so that's why we do that. We can break this plant. And that's the boss room. Uh, everything should be fine. Oh, uh, give Mistina a Mystic Cross as her attack. Important. So the first thing this boss does every single time it starts is every, I'll always go first, so feel free to mash through the menu. If you go first, I've never seen it happen, it will cast Reflect Sorcery. So you can't open it with a magic attack. However, this does not mean you cannot use magic attacks. So if we hit with Flameth, which we hopefully do, we can use our magic attack, even though he reflected Sorcery. You just can't open with it, that's all. Should be dead. Attack power is very good. So after that, you're gonna head up here and pick up the artifacts, which I'm sure everyone missed the first time they played this game, or just me. I definitely missed it. So same thing, take two, give up one in that order. Sometimes I feel like this category would be better if we didn't have to pick up the items, <clears throat> but that's all right. So now you can leave. Pretty easy. Freya still hasn't killed us yet. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to head up and do Arctane Ruins now, which we haven't found yet, which this should be it. Uh, we found the Temple. Or right, that's Citadel Flame. This is a weird order. I haven't gotten this one before. There it is. Okay, so it's on the top left. Uh, we're gonna go and grab this. Here, I'll talk about the backup strat. So if you come into chapter five, do everything that I just did in the same order, no problem. Once you get here, you're gonna make one quick change. Uh, so this is if you haven't done Cape of Thacus in chapter four, and now you're doing it in chapter five. Everything up to here is the same. Uh, we will be grabbing an Aether Scepter in this dungeon. I'll show you where it is. I'll pick it up even though I don't really need it. So instead of turning down there, you're going to go up here, up here. Uh, now if you're like Mocha and you reset when your Aether Scepter breaks, then I guess you save two rooms. Anyway, here's the Scepter. So now we're going to need it anyways. Uh, I guess, we'll, yeah, we'll need it anyways. That's fine. It's fine to show this. We'll come down here. Do some really bad platforming. So wait, don't go into the room on the left there, or on the right, rather. It traps you in, and you make you fight some mobs. So just do this, break your crystal, do that. Right, we're going to equip you with a scepter, because you don't have one. All right, your attack is set to... Uh, right, your attack is set to cross. We're going to give our mans here a sword. Uh, actually, I guess I recommend giving a bangle as well, or rather a curio as well. We definitely have the money for it. Curio is very important in the run. Uh, just makes the XP management pretty easy. But we also need him for the next fight. So we go in. Uh, it's a pretty easy fight for the most part. Just it's the same thing as every other fight with a big mage. You start off with cross. We're just gonna build a hundred meter. I should kill everyone. Just use uh, Mistina Super. Everyone dies. Uh, if you want to do some kind of weird strat, uh, there is a mighty check at the bottom of this. So this here is a mighty check. Uh, it, it adds an extra... Like, you can sell it, which is really good. Uh, because we need to sell some items later. So if you find you're lacking on um, material dollars or whatever they are, 
you can go ahead and pick that up. But otherwise, it's a waste of time, since Mighty Check doesn't do too much for us. So if you haven't done Cave of Thacus, uh, go do it now. As a side note, if you haven't done Cave of Thacus and you try to squeeze everything in, uh, it's very tight, you can't enter the wrong place, you can't mess up. So Cave of Thacus in Chapter 4 gives you a little bit of leniency, but in Chapter 5 you have no leniency whatsoever, it uses up every period we have. Uh, be careful. So we're going to go do Dark Tower, which should be this, I hope. Okay, yeah. So this is Dark Tower of Service, or whatever his name is. Uh, we're going to head up here. And there's a heart that we need to hit. And this will open up one of the chambers. Uh, and then we're going to go up as well. And we need to open up this little cavern here. Uh, we need it for later. So you're going to fall to the right as you come in. You're going to drop down on top of this box. You're going to pick it up because we need it. Hopefully don't get hit into that. Uh, and then jump here. It's a Mage Slayer. We're going to need that for the pan. Oh, actually, hold on. I'm just thinking about something. Um... Mm, no, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Now we're going to head down here. There's a door that's closed, so we're going to go through here. And you're going to jump on the second one now. This will let you pop out on this side. And this door won't be closed anymore. For here, you can get a little bit of a boost. It all depends on your timing. The timing is very hard, so I just match circle. and That wasn't too bad. Uh, here, pretty easy. Just shoot yourself. Uh, there's a super fast strat for these, but I'll do it that way. This part always terrifies me because you can drop in those, so don't drop in them. We're gonna hit the heart. Now we're gonna shoot ourselves. And here we pick up a noise arrow. This becomes a weight reaction for us later. Uh, the pattern here is left, right, right. So this one will also be a right. Uh, we're going to change up our team order here. Uh, we don't need any casters. The way this fight works is that uh, both of the enemies have to die on the same turn, otherwise they revive each other. So don't let them do that. We're going to give him the fire crossbow. Please don't give him the mage slayer. I'm praying for you not to do that. Uh, change his ability to aiming wisp first because you want the unblockable. Uh, we're going to give him some skills. For the most part, Layla doesn't matter too much, but uh, it's better than having a caster on your team. So. Well, it doesn't matter too much in terms of damage, but the unblockable is very useful. Uh, and here, I'll also make a bunch of Union Plumes, which I probably should have done earlier and I forgot, but not a big deal. So Union Plumes, just make like 60 of them, however much you want. Um, I'm going to save state. So the fight's pretty easy, just... Well, huh. Some, it's it's hard to optimally. Just get them low so that way they don't die. The only super I really use is Arngrim super, just to tone them down a little bit. It should take you about four or five turns. Uh, you can use Leyland super too. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, let's, let's see how it goes. Let's use Leyland super. It doesn't hit too hard. Alright, we killed him. That's why you don't do that. We probably should have used Lucian Super, to be honest. Yeah, so we get him a little bit lower. Uh, you probably want to get him lower than that, to be honest. The extra gems here are really nice for the XP. Argrim Sword broke, uh, which kind of sucks, but that's alright. That's probably low enough. We're not really going to get any lower. Yeah. 
I don't want him to die. I'm kind of scared to use Ungrim Super here. The Ungrim doesn't have a weapon. I don't know. You're not really ever going to die here. Eh, yeah, screw it. Let's just go for it. We have enough hits. So, this ch we got a lot of crystals, which is good for XP. Uh, you can pick it up in this order. You need to take, you have to take this. Oh, you don't have to. I highly, highly, highly recommend you take it. Uh, it'll make you access to cool stuff later. Uh, this one you want, so you can sell it. Because it sells for a nice price. Otherwise, not too useful. So, the fact that Arngrim's sword broke doesn't really matter. And this is a spear, which is really bad. You can give that away. I mean, good as far as spears goes, but... Uh, spears are not great. So what we're going to do here is we're going to transmute our... Which one is it? Oh, do we not have the gem equipped? Okay, equip the conversion gem. Go here, transmute. Uh, we need to transmute this book that we got into an Ori, whatever the item is. Uh, and then transmute that into a gem. So this is our greater conversion gem. I don't even remember what it's called. They both say conversion gem, but you could see that uh, the first kanji there on the left is a, uh, like an, it's an up, symbol for up or like good or better, or greater. So that's the one you want to use from now on. Now here, we're gonna, this is the tome that we got at the beginning of the, of the game. It's gonna make an ice sludge. It's something like a tome of the underworld or something like that. So transmute that, and then transmute this unicorn horn into an actual unicorn horn. Uh, from here, you can give Arngrim the Icicle Edge, or Icicle Sword, or whatever it's called. I think Icicle Edge is the gray super. <laughs> uh, you can take Leyland out of the party. We're going to put Jolanda in. Uh, she can have a unicorn horn, because I don't want to break my scepters. She can have a magic bangle, or sorry, a magic bangle. And if we had a Curio, I would give her one. Which you can have a mighty check for now. And we should be good on evaluation, which we are. For the most part, your casters don't really need curios. Um, but, you know, just in case. Uh, we're going to head here. Now we're going to jump into these little mouths. And tap left when you're falling. You don't want to hold left because you'll fall too far. But you can just tap a little as you're falling. Here you can hold right. Not cancel your slide, preferably, and head out. Uh, what else do we have left here? We have Citadel Flame, and then we're gonna send a pollution. Citadel Flame is some, makes me feel some type of way. Uh, it's fun, but yeah, we'll leave it at that, it's fun. So start your RNG fest by just holding right and pray, pray to Odin that this game lets you get past this section. Thank you. So use this machine, it opens up the bridge. Uh, dimension step is really nice to have here. I think this is one of those hard mode dungeons that you don't normally do. Even though, I guess now that I know the puzzles, it's not that difficult. But maybe it was difficult before. Uh, we're gonna head down here. You wanna make an explosion there, bounce yourself onto it, and not get a first try, which I haven't done in a while. Usually it's first try. It's relatively easy, just really bad today. Uh, we're gonna do that. We're gonna blow ourselves up. We're not, I guess we're not. You have to stand further away from the wall to get the explosion. Please, please, hello, thank you. Man, what am I doing? Hey, you want to jump straight up and then hold left, but apparently I can't do that today. So let's try this again. There we go. 
That took too many tries. That's all right. So you get up there. Actually, it's not as difficult as it looks, I swear. Usually it's a first try thing. Uh, for here, you just want to make a wall of crystals going up. And then jump too early, because you're really good at this game. And then do it again, because difficulty. All right. Eventually you get up here. You don't want to go too high, if you're wondering why I'm not like going higher and jumping. Because you're gonna, there's a ceiling, and if you go too high, you hit the ceiling, then you can't jump. Like that. So, those jumps should be working. I don't know why they're not. Again, this place is actually really easy. I'm just really not smart today. I can just slide all the way down here, head up here. And how do I do this? I put the crystals here. So this boss is weak to magic or fire. Uh, sorry, it's weak to ice. <laughs> magic or fire. It's weak to ice. So uh, you have the icicle sword. It's pretty easy to kill him. Now with this urn, you can do this faster if you are really greedy. Uh, it just depends how greedy you are. That was pretty greedy, but it worked out, which is nice. So I believe we just have Mystina block up with the boss, and then... So you want to keep, so this thing, I think it's, it's like a, a eternal lamp, or eternal fire. Anyway, it keeps you from getting frozen, which is kind of relevant. This is in Furnace. Uh, this item will be used to help us kill Fenrir at the end of the game. Keep that. You don't technically need it. There, You can get around it. You can just fight Fenris or Fenrir. Uh, but uh, it's easier if you do it this way. Keep this as well. I'll help you and your life, and your studies. So now we're gonna give up anything, really, because we didn't give up anything. You wanna keep all three items. So you wanna give up something manually. Uh, afterwards, keep in mind, not before, because otherwise you'll override it, and it won't work out the way you want it to. Hello? Well, time to be embarrassed by these fires that are about to hit me. Or not. We're good. My platforming is super sloppy on the PS4 controller. Now I understand. Why does this happen? I'm holding up. So if you hold up and like, I don't know, it's a PSP thing, I guess. You hold up and then you hold hit circle and then it doesn't let you uh, grab on off for some reason. I never had that issue on PSX, but who knows? Uh, so now you pray for good fire RNG that will carry you across, and that one's pretty bad. You can damage boost uh, all the way to the beginning. Okay, so we have four trap, we have four periods left. We're going to send a pollution. So we're going to go to skills, traits, and just, I believe we max everything. Because we haven't sent anyone up to Freya yet, so we got to keep her happy. And Lucian's also really cool. I'm gonna take these two away from him. He can keep the sword. I don't really care about that. And you're gonna get this cool cutscene, which we're gonna skip. A lot of lore stuff. This one I actually like, even though it's really long. I don't. I never mind watching it. But for the sake of this video, we're not gonna watch it. So we're going to put uh, Leyland back on our team, and that'll be the chapter. She's going to come talk to us again. Lucian did stuff. Good. So this is chapter six. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is 
we're gonna head up to the Weeping Flower Metal, uh, which is the thing right beside us here. And then we should be able to just exit, yes. So now we're gonna send up Lorenta, which I guess we should have changed her out. We have to send her up with some items. Uh, a monster tome and a flame bandana. No struggle is without me. Oh hey, Acne. Or Akani? Sorry. Thank you for following. I appreciate that. I tried to read your name like Arakune or Amane, but it was neither of those, and then I just mixed them together. <laughs> Uh, so, we can send her up, but first we need to give her a monster tome and a flame bandana. So these found under the bottom here. Uh, this one should be the flame bandana because it has the fire uh, kanji. And then, I can't remember which one the monster tome is, so I just buy both of them. But it is one of them. Uh, I'm actually going to make a quick save here, just in case I'm wrong, and I can just go back and redo it. But I think I'm right. So we sent her up. Otherwise, Freya kills us. Uh, and then we're gonna do. We need to find the pan and shrine in this chapter, which those are pretty fun to run. So that was Shunken Shrine, and now we need to find the pan. I don't remember. Every time I run shrine, I feel like I forgot everything about shrine. The pan should be on the top right there. So let's run Shrine. It's the one here on the little river. Uh, it's pretty easy. Like I said, every time I run it, I feel like I forgot everything because it matters so little. Um, but it feels like I always get everything out. There, there are things to practice. I just I feel like I care so little about this dungeon. So ignore that for now. Uh, actually, don't pull this out either. Just go all the way to the end. We need to pull out this wall. Technically, it doesn't have to go this far, but just in case. Uh, and then we need to pull these clocks down. As a first time running this game, it was really confusing because I pulled it down once and I was like, oh, cool. But apparently, you can just pull it all the way down. The problem with me is that they gave you the XP reward right away, so it made it really confusing. So I'll just pull those out. Now you can walk in here. We need to hit a little statue. Sort of why you move the the thing out of the way, the grate, the wall. So we head back here. We'll just go up in the next room. We'll push these back in, reduces the water level. Uh, sorry, did that too fast. So, you just head... <laughs> Essentially, I just jumped down the staircase if you wonder where I went. I was here, you jump down here, you go down here, and through the doorway. Sorry, I skipped over all of it, but uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Is this the one you need a crystal for? You do. Okay. So, make a crystal or gem, break it, pick it up. Uh, you pick it up with the X button, don't crouch when you do it, it'll automatically crouch for you. Carry it here, hit circle, it'll drop it. Uh, okay, I'll drop it better than that, probably, but it would drop it. Each of the pieces has different float properties to it, so just figure out how far you need to stand. If you want to keep it real safe, just do it from here. I'll open this door for you. So here, I honestly just take a guess, because I can never remember, I think it's somewhere around there. Yeah. It's just right past the wall, it looks like. This room has nothing. Here, we need a big piece. Well, we don't need a big piece. I highly recommend getting a big piece. If you're running the English version, that laser won't be there. Uh, but it is here in the Japanese version. So just carry this all the way to the end. 
Uh, I'm sure everyone as a casual made a whole bridge and went all the way across. And then when you watch me do it, you're like, wow, why would I ever do that? I said the same thing. <laughs> when I watched Moko run, I was like, why didn't I just, why did I make a whole bridge? Why didn't I just take it to the end? <laughs> uh, anyway, same thing here, but there's two of them. So I need to go back and grab the other piece. The next part, I can't really explain to you. You just, just try it and you'll figure it out. Essentially just match circle a lot. That's how I do it. And then hope you get the jump that you're looking for. All right, good. Something like that. Just mash circle and hold right once you get to the top. Uh, there's another beam section, which I also never remember and I sort of eyeball it every time. This one here. I think it's like here and here. And every time I say, this isn't it, I'm really dumb. And then every time I get it on the first try. Yeah. So that happens. <laughs> Uh, like I said, I forget everything, but then I also forget nothing. Uh, let me just make sure that everything makes sense. Everyone has their items. Uh, blah, blah. Good, good, good. She needs a curio. Let's get her one. We'll need a curio for two of Monty later, and I'll make me want to die running that dungeon, but that's all right. And she's on Holy. Yes. Yeah, we have a bobble. Okay, cool. So going to this boss, pretty easy. I'll show you how easy he is. He's gonna do one attack and then that's about it. So you're gonna use the holy water here. Uh, it does how much damage to undead. I think it's a hundred thousand. Yeah. So pretty easy fight. He just has a lot of HP and his resistances are really annoying and we need somewhere to use our water. And this is a good as place as any. Now, the nice thing about using the water here is that he drops an item that you can transmute to make more water. So you can use Mithras Holy Water again, which is great. As long as you have the conversion gem, I believe. I believe we can actually keep all these items uh, because our valuation is so high, but... And like, not, and then not giving anything up is what I'm saying. We need to sell some things later for Grom, which I believe we make next chapter. Since there's no real reason to make it now. Uh, I mean, I can check, I guess. We can make Grom now. Yeah, our evaluation's at 1. Look how nicely that lines up. Uh, so you can change this to Mithra's Water. I want to see if we can make a Grom or not. Just for Palace. Uh, we can make a Grom if we want. We're pretty far away from it. Uh, okay, let's try it. Usually I make it next chapter, but let's just do it now for fun. So we're going to go to Convert to MP. We're gonna sell for well, we're gonna sell reflex, we can sell shiny, star guard, star guard, uh, that can go, we're gonna keep in furnace, lost seraph can go, sword can go, maze can go, uh, that can go, vein can go, two handed can go, freeze can go, sting is whatever, we don't need the beast slayer anymore, don't need any of these anymore, power bang will keep, mage slayer will keep, crossbow can go, mighty check can go, uh, what else am I missing? We don't need any of these technically. Oh, we sell eggs. Okay, so we have enough to make a Grom. So we're gonna buy this thing here at the bottom. We're gonna use item, we're gonna change it. It's gonna make a Grom. And this thing does insane damage, 2000. Uh, and we'll give it to Leneth. And make sure to change your skills. You don't have to re-put the auto item in every time, just uh, make sure that the skills are set. So like the auto item uh, re the auto item percentages will retain. You just need to make sure that you re you set the items to be, or set the skills to be active, essentially. If you mess up uh, skipping up that part, it does close and you have to redo it again. So try to mass circle really hard the first time. <laughs> This thing won't hit you if you just run all the way up. Uh, you can do a little jump if you want, like I did. That's mainly for fun. Oh, I missed this one here.
Uh, so we'll skip all those, or watch them rather. Uh, there's a little skip here where you can sometimes you can jump on the crystal before you can jump up on the wall, and then you can jump to the wall from the crystal. Uh, it doesn't save very much time, but if you feel like toying around with it, feel free. So that's that done. We need to teach Ms. Christina a few spells while we're here, which we should have done earlier, but I'm not very organized. That's a big part of saving time in this run, is that you have to be organized. So this is Guard Reinforce. We're going to take off the Greater Creation Gem, and not what I took off. This thing. Uh, so here's Guard Reinforce. Uh, that makes Spell Reinforce. We want... Um, so that's Reduce Power, which we don't care about. But I think Reduce Power... Let me click it. I think Reduce Power becomes uh, Sap Guard. Reduce Guard. So we want Reduce Guard. We'll teach that. Oh, Mistina already knows it. Okay, well, we'll keep it for later. Because we need it for our second wizard. And then this is Guard Reinforce, which we don't want. Spell Reinforce is good. And this is Reflect Sorcery. We'll take Spell Reinforce, because Mistina needs it anyway. I'm trying to find... Reduce Power. There's a way to make... Uh, attack up, I believe. I don't remember how to do it. Let's see here. Maybe I'm wrong. So we don't need Prevent Sorcery. That's pretty useless. Reduce Power becomes Reduce Guard. So we don't need that. Uh, okay, we're well, fine. Oh, let's make Concentration. Or, uh, wait, wait Reaction, sorry. So we go to Noise Arrow... And we make a weight reaction. And we'll give it to Mistina. Uh, I like the extra damage that it gives, so feel free to max it. Not like we're doing anything else for our points anyway. Uh, if you didn't max out something, remember that you didn't. I think I didn't max out something here. Yeah. And everything else should be fine. Just try to remember what you did and didn't max out. Okay. So let's go do to Pan. Uh, the first fight's really easy. It's just that you need like reduce. You don't need reduce guard. It helps. Oh, you should be reduce guard and super. Sometimes you don't need it. Uh, if you have a Grom, you don't really need reduce guard. Uh, I usually kill him in. Let's go for a one turn kill for fun. How about that? So this is about reduced guard. It should be done. Uh, just by doing... So the the more supers you do before... So like before Mistina's super, the more supers you do, the more super, the more damage her super does. So I think with each super you do, the next one does 25% more, and it stacks. So hers does 50% more here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's dead. Okay, so you don't need the reduced guard if you have a Grom. Which is nice. Well, making a second Grom uh, next chapter, if you can. If you can't, uh, you can wait a little bit. But that's why it helps to keep all the items. And when you give up the items, just try to make sure you give up the ones that cost the least. Uh, also, you can sell the golden eggs. I did a test to see if I kept all the golden eggs, would it make my experience faster? And it just didn't. It was the exact same speed. It's possible that we can kill about the Leyland super, but... Like, just a farm German Mistina. Oh, let's try this for now. Anyway, you get the gist of it. And now he can leave. He'll come back. But you don't have to fight him a third time, luckily.
there's a nice bit of lore here uh, when you watch or when you play through VP2 you'll see a lot of it I actually have no idea how loud it is for you guys volume wise I guess I can turn it up a little late into the vlog to do that but for me it's really quiet or rather for me it's really loud but it doesn't look too loud on the sound meters Anyways, so you know this room, they send you back in time. I'm gonna fast forward this, essentially just walk out the same way you came in. You literally just go on a straight line. And then just walk all the way out. There's a little bit of text here. You're gonna go into the first house here. We need to talk to a lady to figure out where the queen's hiding. Uh, so we go up here, we talk to the maid here. She'll tell you something about the queen's hiding in the castle somewhere. I need to go find her now. Uh, yeah, so just hold. Actually, I don't wanna say hold right, cause that's not right. Once you walk into the center room, you head up and then you just hold right or left depending on how the rooms work. I guess I'll just walk through it, why not? Oh, excuse me. Anyway, talk to the queen. She's here. Watch the cutscene. Yeah, the mages are there. Now I have to go fight the actual boss. So we're gonna head all the way right. We're gonna head up. And then there should be a little thing to, a little glass to shatter. <clears throat> so before you enter the boss fight, equip the Mage Slayer. Uh, it's pretty easy, just use the Mage Slayer to kill everyone. It doesn't kill the last guy at the back, but it'll kill everyone else. So you use Leyland to unblock the first guy. Use Mustino to unblock the second one. And then just fight as normal. Use another super, sure. Little Lance is really slow, or really fast, rather. I just realized that I never killed the character with Lila and Super and heard that voice line. You can pick this up in any order since we don't really need either. And that'll be the end of this chapter. Everything is good, everything is good.
So we're going to fast forward since it's literally a straight line. Uh, I'll just literally right to the left. <laughs> You'll eventually get there. We can end the chapter here. It's a bunch of text, blah, blah. blah. It's a cutscene. You'll have this one here and then the next one in the next chapter. The game gets a little bit more difficult in chapter 7 and 8 with the platforming, but for the most part, it's not too bad. Hopefully Freya doesn't kill us, because that means we would have made a mistake. Okay, good. Freya has not slain us. Though she did put us in the corner of the map, <laughs> for whatever reason. Alright, praise be. We are not dead. Okay, so here we need to do Forest of Souls, do Forest of Souls again, do Tomb of Monty, and send up Jalanda and Cashel, and that'll be the end of this chapter. So let's go search. Okay, so I think it's this one here. Yes. Okay, so uh, you could have made a Grom there at the beginning if you wanted to. We're just gonna make a quick order optimization here. We're gonna put Grom on Leneth and Furnace. Actually, sorry, we're gonna put Icicle Sword on Leneth and Infernus on uh, Arngrim because we need them for certain boss fights here. Uh, okay, I'm literally just gonna go left, so just go left to talk to the elf. Then head back to the right. Sorry if it's kind of confusing if I skip through it, but I literally just walk straight for a little bit. So you need to head down here and then to the left. You're going to find this river or this well that's empty. They're also going to tell you to come back, so you come back. And then we get our water. We have to get certain items as we go through here, which is the whole objective of the of being here, I guess. We're going to head up here, uh, head here, and on top of this tree there's an ape that we need to kill for whatever reason he's weak to some element i can never remember that's why i just put both uh it's either like he's weak to fire or he's weak to ice i don't know i guess it doesn't really matter i uh, just walk up and talk to him like a nice friendly chat they always go first just as a side note and hopefully that wasn't the weapon we needed that was the weapon we needed. Okay, so I guess it's Ice Skull that kills him. Don't faint again, please. Okay. This fight normally isn't very difficult or complicated, but uh, because it's Lana fainted, it kind of is. <laughs> anyway, let's just go through everything. We'll die from the super. So just Argon Grimm and Mastina super, pretty easy. So we can head here. We do need the Infernus to kill the Cockatrice from what I remember. Goodbye. Faint. Yep. That's what happens if you mistime it, and you get stupid garbage like that, where it just goes in all, all directions that it doesn't need to go in. It would be nice to get a Mastina super last turn. But no big deal.
This fight should take about one or two turns, depending on how bad your RNG is. Or how many mistakes you make. But usually it ends in about one. So we can head back up to that main point, uh, and then go left here. I can't remember if we're supposed to turn there or not. We are. It's been a while. So I head left at this main like intersection. You can go to the you have to go to the next one and then head up, and then you'll go down here for the cockatrice. These bugs are really annoying if you do not have uh, Infernus equipped. Why Arngrim? Leave him alone. And of course he has the Infernus that we need. <laughs> so, uh, because he is being revived mid-turn, he does not get an extra attack. Or rather, he does not get to attack. Okay, so that's that. So now we just have to head back to the main point that we were at. So go up, back up here. We're gonna head down back to the main point where, our, like, the hub, I suppose, of all these monsters. Just here. And then you go left and down. Yeah. Now we're just gonna walk all the way right to get to the elf. Just talk to her, she'll finish her whatever she needs to do. Her repairing. So this is the flame jewel. Uh, Odin wants it. We're gonna keep it <laughs> because we're not very nice. Here, repair this uh, spirit orb flame thing for me. I'm like, all right, no, I'll keep it. So we have 17 evaluations, so we can just speed walk our way. Uh, you can exit here. Technically, we're not done though, because there is another boss, and we need to do that boss. So we head back in there. We, as you notice, we only got one artifact, and the end uh, dungeon music didn't play. So let's walk back. We have to go back to the fog where the elf was, and then I believe the pattern is down, forward, down. Don't quote me on that, but that sounds about right. It's either down, forward, down, or forward, down, forward. So let's try down, forward, down. We got it. Okay. So now we go to fight the cockatrice again. Uh, again, pretty simple. We'll just punch it. There's actually a nice bow here for us, which is good. The sword is useless, but we will take it anyways to sell. And this bow is actually pretty good. Just make sure you jump before you pick it up, I believe. You have to be at like the right You have to be at the right level of it. Since it's technically up in a slant. So I believe that's an elven bow that we got. We can give this to uh Leyland. Make sure aiming wisp is first, as always. Uh, give Grom here. We're gonna make a Grom for Lenneth in a moment, so we can keep everything else the same. We have seven evaluation, which is good. I'm gonna head up here and then just walk all the way out. Pretty simple. So then we have to do two Lamonti, which I don't really know how to guide you through because I barely remember it myself. And then um, we just send up our, our folks. But before we do that, let's make Grom. Probably, I hope, I hope we have enough things to make Grom. Okay, so. I'm gonna quick save before I do this, just in case I don't. So that, so that, that can go, that can go, Fire Crossbow can go, Mage Slayer can go, uh, Furnace we need, Curio we need, uh, this is something I don't care about. I think it's a broken wand. Friend Sorcery, Prismatic Missile, Dark Savior. 
Reduce power. Reduce guard. I'll take. I'll keep reduce guard. <laughs> yeah, we're not really close to it. Uh, we can sell some of these, but none of it's worth enough to where it matters. Yeah, that's fine. No big deal. We can get it next chapter. So, Tomb of Monty. Everyone loves this place casually, of course. Uh, we're going to run past this, I believe. Uh, I'm going to make a lot of errors here. I'm going to go the wrong way a few times because I haven't ran this in forever. And this place is awful. Though, the music is pretty cool. So, just bear with me as I mess everything up. Ah. Right. So here are the Mocha Strats. You uh, make Crystal here, you chop it up. And then you want to pick this up. And then normally the Crystal would break right on top of the... Normally it would break right on top of the thing. As I'm gonna... I'll probably just put it down on top and it'll work. Anyway, normally it breaks like that, where... Um, you don't have to, like, chop it. See, now it's bugged. Because I'm supposed to... It's supposed to just, like, chop on top of it. I've never seen it just go right through. Yeah, I like that. That was weird. Anyway, uh, I don't really know how to get out of here properly, to be honest. I guess like that. That's good enough. Uh, don't head left, go right. Uh, I think it's left, yeah. Uh, so just jump on this. This one's not as hard as it looks. Literally just fall off and hold left a little bit and it'll take you. You need to go on this spot here. You can just fall fall there to be honest. It's not as hard as it looks. I thought I was trying to precisely time it the first few times I tried it, but you can just tap left and or tap right. Uh, you can jump through the fire sometimes like that. So feel free to, might as well do it. I mean, if you get it, it's a good time save. And if not, you end up here and the situation doesn't change very much. Uh, this part is a little bit annoying. The jumps are very tight. Uh, so what we do here is we make that. Oh, God, I messed that up again. You just swipe it before you before you pick it up. The whole point is that you're supposed to. Um, you do this, so that way, by the time you come back, and you can just jump straight up. The whole point is so you don't get close enough to pick it up, make the crystals, swipe it, then pick up whatever you need. I'm just really bad at doing it. But hopefully that makes sense. Just make the crystals, swipe the crystals, pick up the item, and then you can run back while the little crystals are falling from the broken uh, gems, and you can just jump right on top, so you don't have to wait for them. I'm sure that it all sounds really weird and super confusing, but that's how it is. I missed it. I mean, I clipped through it, but then I got it anyways. There we go. Not bad. Uh, I think this one was unintentional, but you can just hop on here. That's probably not how it's supposed to be done. That's how we do it. Okay, so we're going to make sure everyone has curios. Uh, just to make this fight go really well. We need two... Two curios... And we need a, a charge break. We also need a Ether Scepter transmuted into a Tome of Alchemy. Yeah, 
Yeah, any answer here is fine. But if you want to look smart, just choose the last one. Okay, so before we put everything on, we're going to open up this box. It contains an Aether Scepter. We'll loot it later. And then we'll just spawn the king here. So, on the first uh, turn, he'll always cast Reflect Sorcery, which really sucks. But you do have Spell Reinforce. All you need for this fight is Mustina to do really well. And maybe Lenef to be alive. Uh, you're not killing him on the first turn, though. So, you're going to use the Tome of Alchemy to kill his guards. We're going to... Oops. We're going to use... Let's see here. A cross raid. Reduce guard. We can't use... We'll use Spell Reinforce. Usually you should have Attack Reinforce. But I guess we don't. Uh, and then you're going to charge a break. Mystina. So she's ready for next turn. So you can get a turn 2 kill here, probably. Uh, depending on how the feints work out. Again, Mystina can't be the one attacking first. Because uh, Spell Reinforce is up. Or rather, Reflex... Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Hit the wrong button. Uh, reflex Sorcery is up. So... I don't think this is going to work, but we'll try it. Yeah, it's like not even close. I'll try it again. I missed some attacks. That wasn't too bad. Yeah, I should be dead. That seems good. As long as our groom has enough hits. I believe he does. Yeah. Alright, good. That's the fight. Uh, it takes two turns. That's pretty optimal. You use Curios to set up, like, the most optimal situation. Uh, because if someone dies, you want the Curio to bring him back to life so you can set up a turn two. The charge break... Is for Mistina, spell reinforces, and then you can bring her back up. Uh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. You probably don't even need the line of super in there, but just in case. Anyway, that's the fight. Pretty easy. There's a lot of treasure here to loot. And this is where you can make your Grom. Uh, just because you get so many of these. We can pick up the Aether Scepter we left behind. I'll show you how to do something cool. We're going to save state here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remove from our party everyone but Leneth. We're going to take off her guts. And we will take off her Curio if she has one. If she does. So normally all the fights are gone. Uh, however, the ones that remain are the ones in boxes. So we're going to go find a monster in a box. Should be this one here. Yes. And we're just going to let him kill us. Now we're out of the dungeon. So now we put everyone back in. So essentially, you just let the monster kill you. Take off all of your reviving stuff. It'll kick you out. We're going to put Guts back on, because we actually want it, and we'll put the Curio back on as well. Um, 
And that's the chapter aside from setting up two people. We need to make them Skull of Devoin. So you can find those at the bottom of the fourth chart. Uh, there are these ones here, it says Devoin. So we're going to give them that. Uh, we're going to give them some experience so that way we can level up their traits. We don't really use the XP for anything else. I tried giving out every XP in my XP orb, but it didn't seem to do anything in terms of speed. Hopefully I didn't do anything wrong here, and everything makes sense. That's it. So if Freya doesn't kill us here on chapter 8, we'll be okay. Don't kill us, Freya, please. Hey, she killed us. Okay, we did something wrong. I don't know what it is. That's what I was worried about. Um, let me try... Maybe I give the wrong items. Let me try giving them things other than Skull as well. So let's give Skull. Let's give both of these. Maybe I messed something up there. This should be fine though. I'm sending him up at the same time I normally do. If not, unfortunate, and I'll review the tapes, but. <laughs> Should be fine. Oh, maybe it's their levels aren't high enough. Which doesn't usually doesn't matter. Okay, this should be fine. Unless I'm giving the wrong items, in which case it's not fine. Oh, okay, there we go. Uh, I guess either their levels weren't high enough, or I didn't give the tomes out. Anyway, whatever the case was, uh, it's fixed. So just give them a high level, and I got them to 25 if you didn't see it. And then uh, give them tomes and uh, scald the voids. I'll just write that down. Okay. So we'll do that. So now that we're set, we gave Lennon for things. Let's make the Grom, probably, hopefully. Let's give this up. Let's give that up. This we don't need. This we don't need. Yeah, this is how you make your Grom. We're gonna sell our eggs. Make another one of these. Go here. Uh, equip the trends or the conversion. The greater conversion gem crystal. Make this in our Grom. Give Leneth set Grom. Change your skills. Uh, they're already here. Good. Yeah. 
Cool. Uh, now we're going to go do Palace of the Dragon. And we're going to do uh, Labyrinth. And Celestial Castle. And Asgard Hill. And then we'll be done. So we're pretty close. So that's Labyrinth. Right, I like doing Castle first. I'm sorry, I like doing Palace first, which is this one. So, if you look at my notes, you'll see which stones you need. Hopefully I also remember which stones I need. Uh, it's easy to follow along with the notes. Especially if you play the Japanese version. I have it listed out at which stones they are too, in terms of ordering. So this is the first one. Actually, that's a cool thing. When you're running past these, uh, it's good to slide on them, not like that. It just ends up being a little bit quicker. I can't remember if I have to go in here or not. Yeah, we do. So this is death. We need his little stone. Here we have to do this puzzle. So I think this one faces like this. This one remains. This one's a one as well. And then this one's a two. Yes. So you go left to right. Or sorry, well I guess you don't. You start at the top. The bottom go to the top, then go to the left. And it's 2 1 2. Or it's 1 1 2, rather. The only one you move twice is the one on the left. And the top and bottom you move once. All we're doing here is just collecting stones so we can enter new areas and do more puzzles. So this is the third stone. And the puzzle here is 63113424. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are my notes if you want to look at them. One, two, three. Uh, again, easier to follow along. So this should be the last stone. Essentially all of these chambers are the same and they attract each other through different phases. <clears throat> but the layout is always the same. So just as a quick note, uh, there's gonna be one section that we do here where the game self locks if you have not reset it yet. So I, you have to reset your console. Uh, I'm not sure if it works that way on an emulator, so I'm gonna attempt to do it and hope it doesn't self lock. 
Essentially, there's a bodyguard. There's a guard you're waiting to go by and stop moving, but he never stops moving, and he'll just cycle forever. Uh, so, because of that, we reset our console. However, I don't know if I have to do that on PlayStation. I or on PSP. I believe we do. So I'll do it. Uh, usually do it here. I'll make a save and then I'll restart if it doesn't work out. Hopefully those saves stick around. I haven't tested anything. Oh, that was terrifying. Okay, so I forgot how these things work. So you, you want to chase you. This is a quick strat. This is an easy strat I'll show you. But we're gonna we're gonna die here if we oh yeah. You want him essentially the way it works is that I'll just restart it. Um you want him to hit the end without seeing you. Like that. So now he's not gonna see us, he's gonna turn around. And we're gonna try to get close enough where we don't die if he chases us. And then we jump over him. And then we're just gonna lead him to the middle. And he's done. Feel free to stand on top of him or do whatever you want. So this one is a little bit harder. I'll click save here. Um, this one is difficult. So there's an easy strat you can do. I'll show you both, uh, however you want to do it. So essentially text boxes have no hurt box. Like you, they have no hurt box when you're in a text. So I can just sit here and let them go back and forth. And then just go and take the stone from him but that's very slow so what we're gonna do is so if you want to do it that way you can it's really easy you just sit there the other way is to have him chase you back and forth which is terrifying but it is a lot quicker so that's might reinforce which is really good we'll need that later Oh, I, did, I got a slide instead of a... Uh... If you enter one of the void rooms it puts you in, just walk back and forth between an entrance and an exit, and then use the stone to get back in. Just pick this up now so you don't have to do it later. Uh, I slid instead of jumping, that's my only mistake there. Again, slide instead of jumping, just have to get used to the controller. Oh, okay. Anyway, well, if you end up here, you just do this. And then when the lady pops up, you put in stone number two. And then you just walk back. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to speed it up. Uh, I don't think we have this one. No, we do. This D-pad feels very different. So you have to do this four times, I believe. Okay, anyway, you got the gist of it. So just do that. Uh, just do it on a pad you're comfortable with because I can't do it on mine. I can't jump with this pad. Keep sliding. Anyway, pick up this thing, uh, loot the chest. It's just about reinforced for Gondar when you get him here. Uh, so you don't have to reset on emulator, I guess, because he just finished. Normally that guy was softlock on emulator, and uh, he would just keep going forever. Or sorry, he hit softlock on not emulator, and go forever. I believe this one should be the last stone. Actually, it's fourth. Uh, literally, don't worry about this boss fight ever. Just fight him. So 
So the only thing you have to worry about from this point on in terms of Freya is uh, keep your valuation above one. But we've been doing that the whole time, right? So pretty easy. So we can head on out. Which should be the first stone. Okay, so we're now going to do Arianod Laboratory. We don't need Arngrim. <clears throat> when you do need Gondar. Or, pretty sure that's his name anyways. If not, let's call him Gondar. He doesn't know Mr. Cross, so you'll have to teach him that. Let's teach him Spot Reinforce. Let's teach Mystina Might Reinforce. Oh, we have two of them. Good. And then I believe Ignite Javelin becomes Crosshair Raid. Yeah, there it is. So we'll give him that. This is Reduced Guard. Nobody needs it. Which turns into... Prevent Sorcery, which turns into Reduced Guard. Yes. Cool. I don't know what Seal Critical turns into. Oh, I have Elk Feather. Um, yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's all he needs. He just needs a uh, Curio and a Bangle. So we're gonna give him, he just uses scepters. He's usually what I give him, ether scepters. So we're gonna give him magic bangle and a curio. Uh, he's all set up on that. His attack should be this. We're gonna give Lenneth a bow. Let's go make Lenneth a bow. Okay, let's go. Make Lenneth a good bow. Uh, so that's all set up. Let's do a little quick save. Let's head up to the labyrinth. It should be this. Nope, it's the pan. Uh, labyrinth is this one up here. Yeah. So, what do we have here? So we're gonna get a new, um, what do I call it? Sorry, we're gonna get a new, that wasn't right. We're getting a new wand. Okay, so the first one's 10, the second one's going to be 13. There's a lot of lever pulling. Uh, that's 12, 14, 21. Oh, okay. It's this one I want anyway. So that's a good new wand. It's better than Mustina's current one, as you can see. Apocalypse is pretty good. Also doesn't break, which is helpful. 
do, do. Uh, we need here three and ten. Uh, then we need five. Just zero. Uh, this needs to be six. Ten and one. Two and fifteen. Uh, okay. So let me try to remember here. I need to make charge breaks. I'm pretty sure. Just make as many as you can. Pretty good. And this should be five and five. Okay, so with this fight, what we're trying to do is we're trying to hit this guy with as many magic spells as possible. So we're trying to set up our turns to be really good. So we're going to cast uh, Spell Reinforce first. We'll cast Might Reinforce. So that's why we have all like ranged attackers. Uh, and then we're going to charge break two of them. If they're at one health, you can't charge break them. So if they survive from guts, kind of sucks. You'll have to wait, but. Uh, we can go now, technically. I'll try it. I'll see if I don't have to reduce guard. I thought I changed this to. Oh, I didn't. Um. I didn't change his move. Um, sure, let's reload. Hopefully the save is still there. It is. Oh, it's this one. Okay, whatever, that's fine. Let's just go run through this real quick. I'll do it really fast. Okay, so everything's still here. That's fine. Ignore the technical difficulties. We're, uh... We'll I'll fix it real quick. It shouldn't take too long. Go through it as fast as possible. I'm blind. Like, literally, didn't even notice. Uh, essentially, I forgot to give him Mystic Cross. So... What ends up happening is he doesn't have uh, the right super, which I need for him. God, why is he doing that? I don't want that. I'll put a timestamp to where you can skip to. Um, so you don't have to watch it all.
Okay, so this is the long part. Let's change this, give him a bunch of XP. Let's go make him a Curio. Let's go make him a Magic Bango. Um, let's unclick this. Let's give him a Spell Rainforce. Let's give him both Might Rainforce. Let's transmute Ignite Javelin and a Crosshair Raid. Uh, let's give Reduce Guard to no one because no one needs it. Let's have the skills. Give him uh, an Aether Scepter. Like, let's make a skill crosshair raid. Check her skills crosshair raid, which it is. I need to give Leneth a sword bow. So let's transmute this and that. Go to the bottom. Give her a Lost Avenger. Or Last Avenger, rather. Change her skills. Okay. We'll save before the boss, just in case we missed anything. So 10, 13, uh, 12, 21. Uh, this should be 21. Oh, sorry, it should be 14, actually. Yeah, 21, and 3 and 10, and here we need this item. So we need to make a bunch of checks, so like 21, uh, and everything should be fine, so let's save. Okay, so Gondor doesn't have health, which kind of sucks. I don't think I think it means we can't charge break him, which is fine because they essentially gives us an extra turn to set up. I'll try it anyway, but I'm pretty sure we can't. Yeah, uh, we'll just have Layla and shoot, get some damage. Oh, I didn't get material. Okay. Well, we'll try to f work around it anyways. Uh, she'll be ready next turn. We're going to reduce guard. And if the Gondor doesn't die here, uh, we can go. Yeah, this should be it.
Should be it. I wonder if he doesn't die. Yeah, he did. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So none of these items are really important. You can give the unicorn here to uh, Odin if you want. Uh, should be good. Good. Now we have one more dungeon to do. It's this one here, Celestial Castle. We can't enter it because we haven't found it. Okay, there we go. Celestial Castle. Uh, let's see here. Gondor goes away. He comes back. We're going to make with transmuted ether scepter into a tome of alchemy that should be it pretty sure this is the order everything kind of looks the same in this place Looks good. Don't be too intimidated by falling off. It's usually pretty easy, and before I fall off. It all depends how fast you want to go. I'm just jumping to the right here and then uh, holding up. Okay, so the bees, or sorry, this part here of the butterflies is kind of difficult just because your sword hitbox is so bad. So you have to unequip your dimension slip. There's a strat here. I'll try to remember what it is. It's not that. You like stand in the middle. So here I run all the way to the side and I hit the butterflies. And then I'll stand in the middle and see if I can get anything else. Then you want to go all the way here? Yeah. There we go. That's not too bad. Uh, and then make sure to put your dimension slip back on. So this is my favorite boss. She's pretty fun. Uh, pretty easy. You just have to do that again, same thing. Just set up for one turn and then kill her on the second. Or the third if you can't do it on the second. So... Oops. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, Tome of Alchemides 2. It just makes targeting things easier. You only really want to target her anyways. Oh, actually, you don't want Leyland for this fight. You want Gondor instead. That makes more sense. You want it to be like that. This will be your comp for the rest of the game, these four. Well, aside from the cutscene, but... So, we're gonna Mithra here. We're gonna use the Holy Water. We don't need to reduce her guard. Half the time she bounces reduce guard off of Leneth anyways. Yeah, sometimes the mirror bounces it off. I think we can go now, as long as everyone's ready, which they're not. 
Uh, sure. Let's get some damage in. She might super. Nice. Okay, we should kill here. Normally we use our mages, but they're not ready, so. I think Arngrim can kill here without their help. I could be wrong. And if I am, well, that sucks, but. Usually you just charge break the mages. Or they don't, their recovery time isn't as long as it is now. It's not usually an issue. Yeah, it's fine. Good. Nice and easy. Three turns. Okay, and that is all of it for the base game, and then we can head to Asgard Hill and... The nice thing is, um... Just... When you get to this place, you can just fall right off, so you don't have to walk all the way back. And that's the end of the game. We're just gonna go do... So you don't have to worry about Freya or anything anymore, it's all done. This cutscene is really long, but... We get to fast forward through all of it, which is nice. Uh, you can create anything when you're in Asgard Hill. It's all the same. So that's really nice. Uh, you can just make all your items there. So you don't have to make anything now. This fight's super easy. Mastina does a lot of damage. For anyone that wants to play Valkyrie Profile and doesn't want to watch all the cutscenes, uh, I think mobile lets you skip everything, and then also I would recommend playing VB2. It's a lot harder and it's a bit different, uh, and there are only written guides. Once I figure out how to actually run the whole thing, I'll definitely write up something, or I'll make a guide about it instead of writing it up, since it'll be easier to follow, but uh, that game looks fun, and it's difficult, and you can skip all the cutscenes. Alright, Asgard Hill. We made it. Let's make a save. Our first fight is Bloodbane. Uh, so, same stuff as always, pretty easy. Did 
Jesus. Platforming on this pad is not easy. I don't know how people use PS4 pads for running. I find super, or sorry, I find it really awkward. I feel like all the controls just get in the way. It all stacks on top of each other. You'll notice I am making these jump like curves when I jump. Some of them you can jump straight up, uh, and others you can't. All right, makes it you have to walk forward first. So I usually just shake in the air. So after you beat Bloodbane, you do have to pick up this item. I didn't get Mercurio again, did I? I was just thinking about that. Like, he didn't have a Mercurio or a Bangle last time, so... I don't think he has one this time. So cool. I'm gonna charge break one of these guys. Doesn't really matter. They need to draw a reduce guard, anyways. And also because he, um, because of the health loss, his Mastina's health is a lot higher, so most of the time you can still get. Um, let's try without Reduce Guard. Let's just wait. Uh, you should have a Grum on Lanneth at this point, just as a side note, but I don't. His Curio broke and got the trigger. It's pretty crazy. Are you ready, Mistina? You are. Arngrim isn't ready. Uh, I'll wait one more turn. Yeah, I definitely have Grom on Lanneth. Hopefully everyone's good. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Alright, restart it. Um, essentially, you won't, you'll never, well, I'll say you never, you, most of the time, oh, he doesn't have Kiru. Uh, most of the time, you'll never actually die there, but it takes a while. Uh, if you, like, it's easy to mess up and have it take forever. So just be careful. Like, you'll never get here and be like, oh, it runs over, uh, but. You'll have times where it doesn't go according to plan. <laughs> Gross. It's really bad. Oh, it's got some procs. In which case, it's fine. Good. Uh, I assume I can't try to break either of them. God, I forgot to give Lanneth a uh, sword again. <laughs> Sorry, this is really sloppy. His beginning attack also matters a lot. Uh, if he hits everyone, it's really bad. And if he does that, it's fine. Well, it's not fine, but ideally he would just hit like Lenneth or Arngrim, and those don't matter as much. Because you want to be able to charge to break the rest of the team. I don't think we can charge to break him, is that one? Yeah.
He doesn't even have. Uh, I didn't even give him weight uh, weight reaction. Huh. I've never had that happen. It's a new one. Uh, wait, wait, one more turn. Sure. Hopefully no one dies. Oh my god. Hunter was the one I wanted. I didn't really care if uh one of survived or not. Yeah, sometimes this it just depends on his attacks. It's gonna take a long time or not very long. I mean like I said, you can always just finish it, but it's just how long is it gonna take you to finish? <sighs> Please, any other attack would be excellent. Alright, good. We're ready. I don't think we need a Lineth attack here. We just go for it. So his Aether Scepter broke. Uh, it's good to hear that. So we can put on another one. Now this is a weird one where the item... Essentially, so we give him Infernus uh, for the next fight. But you want to give him Leviathan afterwards because Leneth gets the really good sword during Loki. So unfortunately you're forced to chop up your inventory management here. Hopefully Angram doesn't get frozen. Occasionally he goes first, I believe. Could be wrong. Okay, so now that he's dead, he doesn't drop anything. We're gonna give him the uh, Bloodbane Sword and we'll keep everything else the same. Oh, we have to make Lucid Potions. So go here, you're looking for a Lucid Potion, just make 10, since 10 is all you can carry anyways. You'll need it for the first phase of Loki. Please. So we'll skip all this. The fight is relatively easy. You do have to do some setup as always. Thanks, Mirror. So go here, use the Lucid Potion on every character. Uh, I'll make you invulnerable, and when Loki has nothing to attack, 
Uh, he'll just end his turn. And then end your turn, and this cutscene will happen. Okay, so same thing as always. You might reinforce, but reinforce. I reduce guard if you have time. If you don't, it's cool. Uh, and then charge break here. Either? No, can't do that. All right. Oh, we're ready to go as long as no one dies. Uh, we can go with this probably. Uh, sure, let's try it. Line of Super does a lot of damage, so we can have her go last. That's pretty close. That took way longer than you needed to, but that's how it works. You can go, if you want to make it a little bit more consistent, give Gondar a few more levels, uh, so that way he can actually survive attacks, <laughs> or up his survival stat. make it easier, for sure. All right, that's pretty much the game. Uh, it's not too bad. The run's not super hard. You can make a lot of mistakes and still finish, which is nice. And got an auto item. Uh, make sure that you don't die. So that's really cool. Uh, other than that, the cutscenes are kind of long to watch, which is sort of annoying. But it is fun to run once in a while. So again, I recommend running back with Profile 2 or uh, other games that a little bit faster. That's it for today. I'll be probably posting this to YouTube at some point. I have to make a few annotation notes for places I messed up, but 
other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.